I mean, I knew I wanted to do under gravel because, and, and people were saying, well, if you can do under gravel, won't the lungfish dig in it? Well, he doesn't yeah. seem to disturb the bottom. I think they like digging in like sand, sand. S sand or mud. Yeah, mud. So they can bury themselves and create that mucus of nastiness. A hundred years ago, I built this cabinet. So my, you know, my issue was, um, how do I do water changes easy? Mm -hmm. And so you um, built around that, I'm guessing. Yeah, and I realized, okay, I got a window right here, <laughs> right? Um, made the overflow for that. Um, and I can't really get water off the kitchen sink because of the faucet. But okay. I've been using uh, a 50 foot quarter inch line ice maker tubing basically, mm -hmm. you know, from my fish room to the 75s downstairs. And I think it's long enough to reach from the bathroom to here. From the bathroom downstairs? No, the bathroom Oh, right, over here. here. Oh, okay. And then I can... Um, Do water changes that way. Yeah. This is actually a T. That's what sets the water level. It's just your very typical overflow. Mm -hmm. um, so that is always full of water. This is just so I can fill it. To do a water change, I'm going to sit this out the window, hook the hose up here. And no, I didn't sacrifice a brand new hose. This was a broken hose, so let's get this on there, like so. Now any water that overflows is going to go out the door. Oh, oh man. Right? Okay, so, oh, and I will have to open the valve. Okay, just open the valve. See, so a little bit's flowing right now. Yeah. That's only because it's a little overflow. That is sweet. So, <laughs> so this is, okay. Oh, okay. Now, to, to set that, I go like this. I'm gonna trade you sides now. Okay. Put a tube on here, suck. All the air is gone, mm -hmm. and the siphon's working. Then I can take this off and put it away. <laughs> that is a that is a neat little contraption you made there. Yeah, that is sweet. This is bent out of acrylic tube. That's actually acrylic tube with a little thing I glued on there. Mm -hmm. Drill the hole. It just takes a little tiny hole. I can probably pull this up a little bit to see the spray bar. Yep, you can see the spray bar here. Uh, we so, so you can adjust it up and down. I can turn it to adjust it up and down. And these joints here, these two are not glued; they're just forced in. Mm -hmm. So I can take it off for cleaning. I can also adjust it up and down this way. You know, up and down this way, and just put shims under here at the height I want. Okay. Um, the reason these are at an angle is if I'm glued here, I'm glued here, and then this goes down to the filter. But they're at an angle so that it locks onto the back of the aquarium. And then this one is just a dummy one. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, um, it, it stops right there. That's a cap, Oops. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so I've been keeping it at about that level right now. Um, over here, this is the siphon. Uh, I glued a cut off hose fitting in there just so I could cap it. And even though the fluval has that pump to start, mm -hmm. right? Um, the reason the cap is there because I can unscrew it to run a brush down the line. It's one thing. Or if I don't get a start, I can fill it with water and automatically prime it. So it's an inch and a half. PVC. Mm -hmm. I glued a sh piece of sheet on the bottom, cut it off, and then I cut slots in it. So this is just like a very typical, like you yeah. buy overflow. Overflow. But then I siliconed it into the corner. Yeah. I saw uh, that. And then made the outside part. So just real quick again, because we uh, we're recording. Not really. I forgot to click the record button. I'm an awesome videographer but uh 
talk real quick about the undergravel again and how you bent that piece okay. out of um, PVC. Okay, so I got it back here. So it's a little bit old school, underground filter is. Uh, I realize that. But for me, it's it's two parts, okay? Because the filter plate is two plates that look something like this. They're a little bit shorter. This one's designed for 75. Uh, the ones under here are about yay big. Um, one side, the right side, is air driven. And I used. Where did it go? I kicked it. I, hit. I used black PVC to make my own lift tubes. And to bend it up at the top, um, basically I just filled it with salt, taped the end, heated it over the stove, bent it, cooled it under cold water, dumped the salt out. After you bend it, then you're going to cut it to length because you've got to have a little bit extra length for the bend. Okay? Uh, and then for attaching it, if you look here, PVC does not attach to the filter. Even if you use the Lee's fittings, it does not work. So what I've done is taken a PVC coupling, um, and you can see that it's kind of swollen in one place. Yeah. Again, I just took it like this, heated this end over the stove till Expanded it's super it. hot, and then pushed it on, let it cool, and that's, that's my that's connection. That's that, yeah. Um, and those, of course, don't show. The gravel covers them all. Um, so the right side is air-driven. The main reason I made that air-driven is I wanted some air exchange at the top of the tank, something to break that surface tension. Right, right. The left side is basically a giant pre-filter it goes over, we saw the overflow up above. Um, that's actually not an overflow, that's a siphon tube. And then it's coming into a Fluval 406. Um, so this side's gravel is basically a giant pre-filter for the 406. Mm -hmm. It's gonna save me cleaning that for a lot of time, yep, yep. right? I still will have to clean it once in a while, but not near as often comes out of the 406, goes through the heater, and it comes back up through the spray bar. And that's gonna give me the filtration, the flow that I need. Um, you really, really outdid yourself here. Yeah, this is just, This is such done. a clean, clean. I would buy this setup right. from somebody, yeah. The left is a little shorter is because it's coming out right under the spray bar. So, um, I didn't put the bend in it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is the home of Lumpy the Lungfish. Yep. Or uh, it will be by later tonight or tomorrow. Right. Uh, the gravel, the substrate is from a rock yard? It's from a place called Simply Rocks. Yeah. In our neighborhood, it's um, Bob Steenfot turned me on to it. It's, it's called Mexican Beach Sand. And it is mixed with a little of... Um, the, just the normal yeah because that's lighter gravel than that, that for sure um, and that's just river rock river rocks from uh, river rocks from local local source yep there will be a big piece of driftwood it's in the process of sinking right now that's not it oh okay i was like it's, it's outside over. in a 55 gallon barrel okay and it'll, i don't know it'll probably take two or three weeks to completely set <laughs> yeah <the sink laughs> it's a really really um, big piece but it's going to go basically from the middle here up to the top um, that'll cover that whole yeah, that's the idea. Okay. It'll kind of hide that. And those will just blend in, basically. Sweet. I might put that smaller piece of wood that's in with him now mm -hmm. somewhere up here. He likes that piece of wood. The, the far wellers do. Yeah. Because they have that channel up the middle. So. And they might go in here, too. Why not? Yeah, why not? Why not, right? He's left them alone so far, right? Yep. <laughs> 